Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Yesterday I posted a short video for a problem solving challenge. Uh, today I'm gonna post the solution to that uh, problem. Okay, uh, the problem came from a uh, viewer called Carlos. Uh, thank you very much for submitting that problem. I really enjoyed it. It's a kinematics problem and here's the problem. So there's a car driving on a bridge at 20 meters per second. Uh, he drops a stone from the window and the stone falls off the bridge and falls some distance H before it hits the ground. Once it hits the ground, it produces a loud sound, and that sound propagates back to the guy who dropped the stone. And 5.8 seconds later, after he dropped it, he can hear that sound. So the question was, what is the height of this bridge? All right, kind of a nice problem. So let's go ahead and solve this uh, problem. Now there's many, many ways to solve a problem like this. I'm gonna do uh, my way. You might have a different solution and that's okay. Um, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, here's kind of a sketch of what's going on. Let's go ahead and um, just fill this out a little bit more. So we've got uh, the guy in the car here. He has the stone and everything here is moving initially at 20 meters per second along this horizontal axis. And once he drops it, well, that stone is move, has some initial velocity. So it doesn't drop straight down. And that's really one of the keys. So what it's going to do, it's going to have this parabolic trajectory since we're ignoring uh, air resistance, and then it's going to hit the ground. So I'm going to kind of label some different time values. I'm going to call this here T1, the amount of time it takes for the stone to fall uh, from the point of release all the way to hitting the ground. Let's call that T1. All right, then what happens? Well, then it hits the ground, and guess what? It's going to make a sound, and that sound Again, propagates in all directions. I'm just going to kind of focus on the sound here that's going toward the guy. And eventually it hits his ear that he hears it. Now, I've told you that from that point, from the initial point of the drop to when he hears it, this is what I'm going to call the total time. And this guy, I've told you what the value is, is 5.8 seconds. So we can just write that down. So I'm going to label one more time. I'm going to say the time from... It hits the ground to the time when it reaches his ear. I'm going to call that time. I'll just give it a different value. We're going to call that T2. All right, so we've set everything up now. Uh, one important thing to remember is that this speed of the green here, of the sound propagating, that's the speed of the sound. And that's moving really fast, right? So this is 340 meters per second. And his speed is always 20. All right, so even when it drops, he's still moving. When that sound propagates, he's still moving to the right at 20 meters per second. All right, so this is kind of what's going on. Let's go now and set up some kinematic equations and try to figure out how we can solve for this height h. That's our overall goal for this problem. All right, so we're going to start off just by writing an equation here. Let's link both of those times. First of all, the total time, 5.8 seconds, has to be equal to the time it takes for the stone to drop plus the amount of time it takes for the sound to reach the guy, right? This is one equation right here. Uh, remember, now we have two unknowns, T1 and T2. We know that the left-hand side here is 5.8. Now, let's try to introduce or get rid of one of these variables, okay? So I'm going to do the first part over here, T1. This is pretty straightforward, okay? The stone falls, again, it's going to fall a little bit higher than H, but let's just say the stone falls a distance H. So we should, and it's only... Um, accelerating here due to gravity. So we should be able to find how much time does it take for the stone to fall a distance h. That's just a free fall problem. Right? So our equation that we would use here would be that the change in height, which in this case is just h, is going to be equal to, um, again, it would be something like this if you're going to write our kinematic equation, plus one half little gt squared. Again, there is no initial velocity in the vertical direction, so we really don't have that term. All right, so the amount of time it takes for the object to drop is this value here. So I'm actually just going to write a subscript T1 over here. So let's do a little bit of algebra just to get T1 by itself. So you bring the 2 on the other side, you divide through by the acceleration due to gravity, and then we take the square root. So at the end, T1 should just look like this, 2 times h divided by a little g, and then you take the square root. All right, so what I'm going to do now is substitute that into my first equation. 
And so let's look at it. So now we're going to have t total, our 5.8 seconds, is equal to square root of 2 times h divided by little g, and then plus the amount of time t2. All right, I'm going to box this equation. This is going to be my first equation. All right, there are two unknowns in this equation. There's the height h, which is what I'm looking for. So I've, at least I've introduced that variable. And now in order for me to get h, I also need to solve for t2. So what we need now is we need another equation that links both of those variables and reduce this to a problem of two equations and two unknowns. So now I'm going to go look at the second part here for the sound propagation part in order to link both of those variables to get a second equation. All right, for the second part here, I'm going to focus on this region here where the sound goes from the ground all the way to his ear. And we're going to try to get a second equation. So first of all, let me just clean up this diagram a little bit just so it's not too messy. Oops, I don't want to do that. All right, so um, let's write down some of the distances that we know. All right, first of all, we know this height. Right, the height here is just h. That's actually what we're looking for, right? h. What else? I'm going to label another distance here, the distance that the sound travels to reach his ear. This distance over here, we're just going to call that d. Okay. And now the other distance will be uh, the distance that the car travels just during this time. All right. Let me put that in blue here. So if I imagine uh, this, just make a vertical line here. All right, there's also this distance right here. I'm going to call that delta x car. Okay, now if you use Pythagorean, right, we should be able to make a connection between all of those distances, right? For example, d squared must be equal to h squared. What else? Plus delta x car squared. Okay, delta x car is just the distance the sound uh, the car travels when that sound is about to reach it. All right, so we're doing pretty good. Now let's use um, some expressions here using the speed and time in order to uh, simplify these expressions. So what is this distance? Well, this distance d, I should be able to write it as the speed of the sound. Right, propagating along this direction here, multiplied by the amount of time that it's going to propagate for. That time is t2. What else can I write? Well, the position of the car, right, with respect to kind of this dash blue line here, again, it's the speed of the car multiplied by t2. Now you see what this is going to do now. If I substitute both of these values into this equation here for distance squared, Let's do that. And you're going to see we're going to obtain a second equation that links the height to the time t2. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So instead of d squared, what I'm going to write here is v sound multiplied by t2. And I square that value. This is equal to h squared. And then the last one, the distance that the car travels here, I can write that as v car times t2. And I square that value. All right, what I'm going to do now is just do a little bit of algebra to simplify this. So let's get h squared by itself. And that means if I bring everything to the other side here, I should have something like this. Uh, v sound squared minus v car squared. I'll just factor out a t2 squared. And then the last bit, all I have to do then is take a square root of both sides. If I do that, I'm going to get h is equal to root of this entire term here, v sound squared minus v car squared. And then if I take the square root here, at the end I'm left with only the time t2. All right, this is going to be my second equation that I'm going to use along with the first one in order to be able to solve for the time t2 and solve for the height h, which is what the goal of the problem was. So let's go on the next page and finish the math. All right, here are the two equations. I guess you have to combine them somehow. So what I'm going to do here is from equation two, you can write that t2 is equal to h divided by this total square root term. 
V sound squared minus V car squared. And then what I'm going to do is simply substitute uh, into the first equation. That's kind of straightforward. And here's what I get. I get the T total equals to uh, square root of 2H over G. And then plus T2. Uh, T2 is this big term here. H divided by square root of V sound squared minus V car squared. All right, so this is it, right? I have one equation, and the only unknown actually in this equation is H. Now it looks really complicated because you have an H here, and here the in the first term, the height appears under the square root, so that looks really complicated. However, here's a little trick, okay? We're gonna rewrite this, and it's going to look just like a quadratic equation. So let's bring T total on the other side. So I'm gonna have zero over here. And now let's group some of the terms. I'm gonna write this term first, and I'm gonna write a bracket here that I'm gonna put one divided by square root of V sound squared minus V car squared. And that gets multiplied by H. What else? Plus the next term. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to factor out the H. So it's two divided by a little g. I'll just put a bracket around that term. And now I'm left with here square root of H. Okay, and the last term, if I bring t total on the other side, I get minus t total. All right, now have a look at this equation. Now, if I rewrite it a little bit differently, what if I wrote it like this? Um, some number a times x squared plus some number b times x plus some number c. <laughs> this is simply a quadratic equation, except have a look at it. Um, well, you'd have to define the value, right? If you're gonna solve the quadratic equation, remember what we're doing here is we're gonna be solving first for root of h because it's root of h that is connected to this x variable. Okay, so if you know the solution to the quadratic equation, right, you can write that x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a except now our x is actually root h. So we're gonna solve for root h, and once you know root h, you simply take the square of both sides. All right, let's go on the next slide and finish the problem off. All right, so the last bit that I do now, I simply write that the square root of h, the solution to this quadratic equation is minus b, so it's minus square root of two over little g, uh, plus or minus, square root of b squared, so this becomes two over little g, minus four ac. Um, a is positive, c is negative, so it'll be plus four. Um, what else, multiplied by c, t total. Let me just put this whole term here at the bottom. This is v sound squared minus v car squared. All of this now divided by two a. <laughs> so it's just two divided by this entire term. Uh, v sound squared minus V car squared. All right, remember at the end, what you have to do is you have to take the square of each side. All right, take the square of each side, and that's going to give you the height H. Now, it looks like there are two solutions here. However, uh, there's one that's going to be negative. Uh, so the positive solution here is actually just forget about that negative sign. Okay, um, and that's it. So... Once you substitute in all our numbers, remember we had V sound, which was equal to uh, 340, we said, meters per second. Uh, v car was equal to 20 meters per second. I said little g, let's take 9.8. And that's it, we know all the, oh, don't forget the T total. T total was given in the problem statement, that was 5.8 seconds. Okay. So you substitute in all our numbers here uh, into this uh, solution, and you should get a height that is approximately 142 meters. Kind of a nice physics problem, right? Because you have to combine the two equations uh, with the two unknowns in order to solve it. Once you solve for the height, you can go back now and solve for T2. You can solve for various other questions that might arise from a problem like this. But anyway, I want to uh, just thank you for participating and special thanks to Tex Texan, the first person to get the uh, correct solution. So thanks a lot for participating. I uh, really appreciate it. All right, we'll see you next time.